Right Welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. Tonight we're uh, going to the College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, we have a brief announcements period. Second, we have our speaker will speak up to an hour. Then third, we will have our question and answer period. Questions are in the form of a question. And then after that, we'll have an infamous rebuttal period where you can speak on or off topic. And we have to be out of here by 8.45. There are two rules of the College of Complexes. One is one pool at a time, and two is no personal attacks. Is there a war on science being raged? Loss of the truth is the real threat to democracy and the survival of our planet. The speaker states the main, the main point is that there is a war on scientific truth on the powers that be. The state, in the form of denying that climate change is a real threat, that nuclear proliferation is a real threat, and that studying the rights of the people by a surveillance state in a real threat is a real threat. In other words, I am defining science in the broad sense of the word, meaning that we are all scientists seeking truth and helping others find truth. Most of the truth is a real threat to democracy and the survival of the planet. It is our collective right to to truth from the state that has been dismantled by deregulation of regulations, the suspension of constitutional protections. These protected us from being taken over by a corrupt deep state or shadow government that uses corrupt legal structures. I mean, <coughs> uses corrupt legal strategies. The politicized censorship of information and intelligence serves to protect political corrupt actors and deceivers and a politically silence the truth of truth tellers and whistleblowers. <coughs> Let's welcome Ellen Corley. I hope you use some projector. Right. I have one. Okay, well, hi everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming. And um, <clears throat> this is my Again, I'm Ellen Corley. Uh, this is now, I think, the fourth talk I've given here. I've been coming here about three years now and love this, this concept of a free speech forum. I think it's critically important. Um, this is really, I think, what education's all about. And I wish we had lifelong free education in America. Uh, I, my background briefly is, actually I was thinking, I don't know if I could find my resume, um, will it work? LinkedIn, um, uh, no, I probably need my password, anyhow I'll just say, is that, um, that my background is, I, uh, I was, in basically education. I have a master's in education, studied to be a high school English teacher, a way to use my uh, degree from English from Colgate University. Um, I loved, uh, you know, didn't really know what to do, had worked in advertising uh, as a figuring out am I a writer, am I a strategic planner, and re a researcher, and found my strength in research. Uh, but, and so basically my research background is as a teacher, uh, education philosopher, uh, you know, what is the function of education as science, you know, it, so that's one aspect of it, you know, that teachers are taught to be scientific in their methods, just as communicators have to be scientific in their methods. Um, any anything has to be scientific. I you know then only lasted three years as a teacher. I was in a kind of urban school setting. Politics got in the way, and um, as that does, and seems like every job and throughout society. But there's uh, and there's tenure and there's regulations and a lot of times they don't work for you. But uh, you know that's the. That's what's gotten me to where I am today, to say that we need to look at our regulations and regulate rightly based on evidence and information. And I, I really, the, you know, it's, 
they say, you know, you might have one big book in you or one big idea. You know, for me, that's my big idea is um, there is a mis, we're being miseducated of America, right? There is a misinformation war going on uh, by our propaganda um, shadow government deep state, uh, Praetorian Guard, they are waging a political warfare, uh, just like they did, with, like a, as a Nazis did. Um, it's funded, you know, by billionaire bankers uh, to keep in power and disempower the people. Um, you know, this is what George Orwell was talking about. This is what we taught in English class. I, I was teaching mass media, and um, that was just thrown at me. And I was, it was not easy to teach because I basically studied Shakespeare and other subjects like that, poetry. But I remember at the time thinking, I need to be trained to teach this subject. It's kind of too hard to expect these high school kids to watch news and compare the news and filter out the propaganda and critically think about it all, especially since I was grading paper and didn't have time to watch all these news. But basically ever since then I have been watching the news, monitoring it, reading about it, and um, really I what enables me to understand something, I, I tried to write about regulation also, as I've actually worked at People's Energy, um, trying to develop new products and services and figure out <coughs> nuclear versus coal and whether we, how we should advertise it and all that. But you, you don't understand whether to deregulate gas in Chicago, um, unless you understand why did they regulate it in the first place. That's where, that's where the perspective comes, right? You know, when you look, I look back at the, the turn of the century, the, the, the banksters and what they were doing, I think specifically with energy in Chicago, um, I, the one thing you know is that these, you know, certain guys were making all the money and not necessarily delivering the services. So what needed to be done was make them into government utilities, right? Make them so that you take the profit out of it. You know, yeah. something like health, education, welfare, you know, infrastructure, you know, energy distribution, transportation services. Um, you know, there's always these you know, people like Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan and Rothschild and the bankers saying, um, privatize it, privatize everything, you know, uh, man's mind. You know, Tim talks about this a lot. Um, or, you know, and we often, I, some of you know, I was raised in a very um, a libertarian family. My stepfather was free market friends with with Milton Friedman and Alan Greenspan and Ayn Rand and went to their study groups and was head of research at Oppenheimer, you know, and he, I was just taught, you know, privatize, look for innovation, man's mind will always, you know, prevail. Well, I, you know, it made sense if you don't look at the other side of the argument, which is, um, what, you know, what was it like in 1890s or before the progressive era? People like Ida Tarbell and McClure started writing about the, the Rockefeller and um, Standard Oil and the monopoly power. See, this is, I mean, I used to play monopoly, right? I mean, and you, we don't really ta aren't taught because uh, you know, look at what is a monopoly. What is the problem with a monopoly? You know, well, it, look around right now, and what you see is that this Trump and the deep state is basically a political monopoly. That's it's like monarchy. That's what dictatorship is. That's what a totalitarian government. And you know, Adam Smith's free market does not work because 
you know, when you have all the control and there's you're the only choice in town, then you're basically a, um, you know, it. You just look back in history at. Uh, I've been looking back at like the 1619 when we started America. My ancestors came over both on both sides in 1649 to Jamestown. But I've been watching these shows and thinking, you know, what was going on there? There was the Virginia Company, a monopoly, and there was the um, there was a war with Spain, another monopoly, and then there was. You know, uh, let's steal stuff, and then there's the police powers that, you know, spies and says that, you know, the Spanish did it, and let's pirate that. Again, that when you have, this is what brings on the kind of police state that we've gotten to, because a free market doesn't necessarily, um, and sadly, I don't think people and protesters have a really effective way of getting truth to power, you know, how are we going, it's, it's been difficult and frustrating for me, basically, um, I work, I'm real active with the Chicago Alliance Against Racist Political Repression, which is a, a group that started 45 years ago by, um, to stop police, racist political repression by the police of Angela Davis and, um, you know, when they, they put her in jail just because she had the gun that the kid used to go in and, um, you know, try to free his friend. And uh, but why she went to jail, it makes about as much sense as Julian Assange and and this other guy going to jail. You know, um, uh, Chelsea Manning or Edward Snowden. You know, being up for the death penalty. I, you know, Angela Davis is a philosophy professor. Obviously, she was politically persecuted. Why? Because the police power is monopoly power, you know? And right now, I just heard that there's laws actually went in today in California this week. You'd think we would have had this before, that they actually, if a police kills, shoots somebody 16 times, or how bad he tortures them, or rapes them, we get to have the records. Up until now, no records, no impunity, no prosecution, no investigation. They get to get away with murder and rape, and, and just as they are in the military. These are authoritarian monopoly systems. If you watch the, the um, there's a movie, The Hunting Ground, about rape on the campuses, but there's, I think it's The Invisible War, uh, documentary made by the same director, one third of the women in the military are raped by their bosses and the other guys gang raped. Nobody says anything, you know, cover it up, just like in the Catholic Church. You know, it, I watched The Keepers, this amazing show, and the reason why it's a continuing problem is uh, they cover it up. You know, you've got the guilty wolves investigating, you know, the other wolves. And the, or the mafia investigating the mafia, the Nazis investigating the Nazis. The, our judicial system and our prosecutors and our um, and the military are, you know, the, the police. They they all collude, and they, there's a wall of silence and say a little hidden rule: wink, wink. Don't investigate that one. You know, let let Jason Van Dyke's cops lie. That's going to work out fine. You go to, I've been to four hearings of these people, and, uh, you know, they pick up an innocent young man, torture him, stick him in jail, and they're not going to let him out because, you know why? They would actually have to admit that even though Human Rights Watch came up with reports saying there's a massive, you know, we know John Burge tortured 120 people and stuck him in jail, but, oh, one of them, John Burge, got uh, caught for perjury, and I think... Did they take his money away? I'm not sure, you know, um, right? Even though the, they're still torturing people and they don't want to let any of them out because they'd have to admit, oh, you know, how many of them there? There's to be precedent. There's hundreds of others. You know, they estimate one third of the, of the boys of the, in prison are there, they're completely innocent. The, the dirty cop Gestapo military police picked them up 
and tortured him into signing a confession. And once that confession's been signed, I mean, try, I've watched him try to get that overturned. We just, Luke and I are uh, going over to St. Leonard's house where they let police, they let people stay when they throw them out of jail, when they finally get out of jail. This guy had been tortured by birds 30 years later, you know, walking in there and, um, you know, they've become really compliant. It's, I mean, it, it's just amazing to me, you know, because I'm like, come, let's go, come with me. We need to go to Washington and tell your story. You know, this is, uh, no onions. I frankly, you know, I remember telling my stepfather years ago, I've read that there's innocent people in prison and this billionaire, you know, he wasn't a billionaire, but a millionaire, you know, closed-minded, neocon, neoliberal, right-winger, you know, said, uh, I doubt that. You know, well, there's no way to get the statistics, so, you know, we just have to deal with politicians going, I doubt that. But even worse, what we have are politicians, this, this, the problem is, uh, what I've learned is the, this, evil like Trump surrogate woman who is a professional propaganda person for the Republican Party. She became the lieutenant governor. This, they're basically the Fox News crowd, you know. Um, they, she came in and basically took my stepfather and half of the family's estate um, by telling him, aren't I smart? I, you know, I'm the one that came up with this this fake article in the New Republic saying if you put in um, Hillary's health care plan in the 90s, that would be Medicare for all. That would. She read the whole document and she said, Betsy McCoy is her name. She said that would uh, lead to no private doctors. It's all Soviet. They went on, online, started putting little Hitler mustaches everywhere. Anybody talked about Medicare for all. You know, this is what these guys do. They accuse communists of being fascist and I know I've been reading about it. it was actually a plan they kind of create the Stalin you know genocide type communists and make it seem like socialism you know is that you know so it's a convenient opposition strategy that you know Fox News and is you know both parties are still doing but it's basically a right-wing fascist propaganda technique and it actually goes beyond that. It, the word propaganda started with um, propaganda out of the Inquisition, when you know there's Catholics and Protestants. You know there are these dirty wars over cat Catholics. Who's got the throne? Who takes the country? You know this is a good way to get you know keep in power or consolidate your power is to. Um, you know, accuse all of them of being traitors and burning them and accusing them of being traitors. But these propaganda wars mostly focused on opposition research, you know, looking at the other guy and then using that political warfare technique, often through misinformation, but just the fact that this is the way it's done is, is what is destroying, I don't know if that thing was, is a threat to democracy. I was going to show, um, go on to Facebook, but I guess uh, one of the topics that I was going to try to explain, uh, Tim says I'm just up here bloviating left-wing battle, and um, and I do often feel like that's what I'm doing online, just, you know, I, I listen to the news, but this is my method, and I call it competitive intelligence analysis, or just intelligence analysis. Right, that's what I got paid to do at People's Energy and at um, CNA Insurance and, and DNA, DDB Needham when I came here. You know, look and understand the context of the, what's, you know, the communication strategy. You know, what should, how should Wisconsin Electric, you know, advertise. And you, you know, you just started, what is a Wisconsin guy? We came up with reinventing Wisconsin, you know, because the idea was grounds. That's something Wisconsin's proud of, and that's something that they could make a great ad campaign on around, and actually they didn't think much about whether or not, you know, the um, 
I don't know whether they, we actually stuck our head in a nuclear plant, but uh, you know the main thing was to make Wisconsin Electric and nuclear power and whatever they did look good. This is you know propaganda advertising, and that's really where the money is. You know, uh, if you look at law firms, people work for the corporations. If you look at the communications industry, you work in PR, lobbying or advertising, and you know. But naive me. You know, I got an MBA at UIC in this, but I, I always thought, well, we're looking for truth, right? You know, we're not going to lie. That's what they taught me. Well, in PR, it's a little, a little bit easier to lie because you're not, they, you're just, you know, you're just Fox News saying what you say. That's your opinion, right? And they don't have to say, I am lying right on the top of them, you know, like, right? That's what they should say. In advertising, you know, you'd say you've got to put this is an ad, this isn't really a newspaper article, um, right? But the point is, kind of everything I, I just, the world really didn't make sense until you realize that really are lying. There really is a kind of evil um, client uh, up there who, um, which, you know, has kind of gotten to where we are now with Trump and it, and so really a lot of my research has, the last five years has been, who are these people? One, they took my stepfather and half of the family's money, and, and my sister took the other half. She was always kind of a deceiver type. And um, she, I mean, she really went into advertising with a, she loved lying, I was just kind of in her nature. And like to make up little fake lies, you know, fake ads and things. But, and that's, really the research that I've been doing, who is behind this? Who, um, where did this start? And how can we stop it? That's my main question. You know, there's a regulations. We had the Fairness Doctrine in 1948 um, was put in saying that the public media has to, the broadcast has to always serve the public interest. And if it doesn't, the CEO is responsible for it of the little, they had a very distributed broadcasting system, which was also a good thing, right? That was before the Telecommunications Act threw that out. Basically, the war was on the regulations that were put in. Um, they were started by this Roy Cohn type that worked with um, you know, Nixon and helped Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he was his mentor. He was um, Roy Cohn. Uh, Sophie was asking me before, you know, did, did you know that, um, you know, Trump used to, when he was a slumlord, you know, said, you can't, actually Woody Guthrie, I think it was Woody or Arlo, lived in, in Trump's apartment complex in Queens, and, but he would not rent to blacks. And Trump, and so the Justice Department, civil rights, that's their job, you know, prosecute that, that's, unfair discrimination, you know, go right to the, you know, the CEO or the owner of the, the real estate thing. And they basically, he used, Roy Cohn said, stall, wait, attack, go back at them, you know. <laughs> Eventually the Justice Department just kind of folded and goes, you know, we can't win. And which is basically the evil legal strategy of Trump. And that's what's, and I actually, I don't think it's as bad on the other side, really, I can't, but I do think their grounding is in intelligence, the abuse of intelligence function. You know, the CIA and the Republican Party has been working together, there's a lot of books written about it, just as their, um, yeah, the, as, and also about the Zionism, and this, I was going to make a list of my 500 books proving this, and I, a lot of them are posted if I could get to Facebook. Maybe you want to bring up my Facebook you can, page. You but, can. Just, just go ahead and type in your Facebook page. Um, just, just type. If to, you think it'll work. Yeah, just go to Facebook.com and uh, log in. Facebook.com. <clears throat> Mine will probably pull up, but, uh, you know, you have to log into yours. You got a J there. Now hit, now hit, now hit enter. There you go. Okay. 
Um, now that mine's gonna. Okay, yeah, you're gonna have to. Uh, oh yeah, I hope mine does. That will be if you. Uh, I have to remember my password. Um, but get rid of that last stem there. Okay. I meant to bring my my computer, but it. Um, okay. Hey. Is that your is that your email? No. Put your phone number in too. Should come up in a second here. Yes. Once you change your password. You don't want it to save. Did I not get it this time? Um, no, just just hit the. Hit, you want to reset your password? I don't. Um, Never mind. Just okay. not you. Just just just. Uh, lock lock lock. Okay. Well, it's going to send you code via text. <laughs> You gotta get um, your phone out and get your text message. Yeah. Right. Is that this snap that's been done in advance? Um, one full at a time. Okay. No. Um, um, okay, so. This is, I mean, this is, what? I think, important enough to do. Um, okay, put this in. This is why I need an assistant. Um, So it, was it supposed to be sent to me? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's there. Just enter the code, and you'll be able to get your uh, get your uh, Facebook up. <laughs> be in the form of an SMS if it went to the right phone. Oh, it's is it? I thought it was sending to. Um, I don't know. It didn't come to the phone. I'm almost ready to give up. <laughs> when it have been okay, it's coming through on my mail. Let me just talk for a second about what I'm what I'm um, I basically what I learned as a competitive intelligence person at People's Energy is that the goal of competitive intelligence is to kind of crowdsource the entire corporation, get everybody. Thank you. Yeah, um, get everybody talking. Uh, you know, bringing in information, open up the conversation, right? Um, like Luke and I went to a, uh, a, a climate um, conference at UIC on Wednesday, and they had a good panel. But the first thing I do, I went to a thing on Haiti at UIC, about, and I, I ask a question because that's one thing, you know, and I, I was like, how are we going to deal, if we're going to deal with climate change, how are we going to deal with the neoliberal, you know, problem is that they're actively denying climate change. You know, uh, that's going to take time. And it, it's a concerted, it's just like getting anything past the Republicans, right? I mean, the, and then on NPR, before you even talk about something, or instead of talking about something, they just say, uh, you know, it's not going to pass, <laughs> right? So don't bring it up, you know? And that's what I worry about is this climate change <coughs> debate, you know? Uh, Luke tells me, oh, I trust AOC, you know, uh, Alexandria Cortez is going to, you know, save the day or Greta Thunberg. And, you know, she's at least peeked into the conversation a little bit. But if the majority, um, you know, doesn't, regulate uh, this, you know, um, or really never really even admits that they've, uh, that they're blocking it, you know, because it's just conveniently kind of denied because they can use Hannity. Uh, I was one of the things I posted this week that it might could have come up. Please, people look at my at Ellen Corley, um, though I don't think Facebook makes it 
easy for very many people to see me. It's and they've kind of changed their model. And now I have to say, is this personal or political or my timeline? And um, I, I mean, every day I'll post ten, you know, articles that should be making the case for why, you know, proving that there is a vast right wing conspiracy that's controlled by the state, the NSA, the CIA, um, you know, it's already been controlled to not, I mean, to control the conversation. It's not free speech like we have. And uh, so we, you know, we, I could educate all of y'all, you know, you could all read everything I say and you agree with everything. Um, you know, or at least we've come to some mutual agreement. This is what science is, right? Uh, we've all testing the hypotheses and we're all saying, I have tested, I've researched, I've been studying this for years, I've consulted the experts, and it's real. It's really going to happen in 10 years. And it's, we're going to be, you know, out of luck if we don't admit it. And why didn't we put in some policies maybe 10 years ago? Well, the same reason we didn't put them in 20 years ago under Carter. I mean, they could just make fun of Wimpy old Carter and his stupid, you know, use less gas theories. And, it, you know, the thing is, I, I even, and this is another thing, There's the, these are propaganda tricks that my stepfather was, you know, trained me in, but that he claimed climate change is a religion. A bunch of crazy hippies with a religious... Thing. And even left wingers will say this is a you know crazy religious um, you know it's a hoax it's a lie and you know it's really hard to they call Satan a slanderer you know but it is hard to deal with disinformation campaigns because you're dealing with shadows and you don't even know where you know the fact that nobody reads your email that nobody reads your your Facebook because. Facebook, you know, came in and, and kind of made it so they couldn't see you, which is right now the censors, and so it's about censorship, but censorship should be kind of fair and balanced and regulated and um, probably government done. Um, one issue, actually Charlie educated me on this with something he said, they, the corporatist um, state says that if a corporation censors you on Facebook and it seems to maybe have a, a corporate, you know, favor the corporate and hurt the truth, um, that that doesn't, isn't controlled by the First Amendment. That isn't a violation of, of the First Amendment because, and I, I was going to give a talk on that, it's, so it's only if government censors you, that's a violation, but if a corporation censors you, that's not a violation. Right. And so First Amendment doesn't apply to that, right? Um, no. If the corporation does it, it's okay. If the, the military does it, it's okay. If the police do it, it's okay. If the country does it, it's okay. What? That's how it is. If the complex does it, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, and I think that's the kind of... My goal in life is to get to the Supreme Court and to make this case with better arguments, and better <coughs> lawyers, and... Um, but I actually fear that the Supreme Court, being a right-wing stack deal, uh, as the Federalist Society has made it, won't take my case, you know, to say that it's like, shouldn't there be a fair trial, you know? And it, you don't think so? I mean, we don't have a right to a fair trial. That was the 14th Amendment, right? Equal protection before the law. Does that not apply anymore? Not since the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act took it out, right? Um, trial for what? The Patriot Act says that because we're at war, we were attacked by some Saudi Arabians or whoever, uh, um, that we're kind of in forever war. This Hitler also used this argument, the unitary executive power. I thought it was but an inside because job by Bush. Trump is commander in chief, you know, how Trump, you know, and that we need, because we're, you know, we've got. Saudi Arabians and Iranians and <laughs> Ukrainians out to get us, you know. And, and so, therefore, Trump can is above the law. He is basically a dictator, just like Hitler was. The same lawyer that that came up with this unitary executive power came, 
his name was Carl Schmidt, did it for Hitler, and then he sent Leo Strauss over here, and Leo Strauss started the Federalist Society and, and the whole neoliberal move, neoconservative Paul Wolfowitz movement at the University of Chicago, right? And they call it free market or libertarianism, and um, it, they say deregulate everything because, oh, that wouldn't be fair to a corporation for them that, you know, so all of this theory, it, you know, it's hard to, t if you take it out of context, you can say, well, uh, maybe, but try changing that Patriot Act law, which is what I want to do. This brings us to today, you know, and what I posted today um, about Julian Assange, because the truth is, every single day, this situation, there's it should come to a head. We should be able to take this on and get in the headlines, kind of like Snowden, you know, when people are scratching their heads and the newscasters are trying to explain, now why did they give a death penalty to Julian Assange today? And, oh, because he's violated national security. And well, the funny thing is, I did bring one piece of paper. Here it is. Um, The, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton email archives about it, that because of Julian Assange, the real reason he's being politically persecuted and prosecuted and falsely convicted, you know, um, by laws that they put in because they did 9-11 themselves, but they, they want their state secrets. They've given themselves the right to state secrets. You know, Sybil Edmonds, exposes them all the she knows she has a rogues gallery if you've ever watched the movie about Sidma Evans but um all the people Julian Assange and Ray McGovern and uh, William Benny is the one I posted today William Benny was the head of the National Security Archive um, Agency he built the system he came out and has you know, be very consistent. We saw him talk here. But today, you know, you listen to him in uh, 30 seconds, what I posted on the internet is, he just explains exactly why the NSA does this. He said they are a shadow government, a Praetorian Guard. They basically, they're, they don't want to, themselves to be exposed. The NSA, you're not allowed, if you're in the CIA, or the NSA, as Edward Snowden was, you're not, not allowed to expose the NSA, right? That's why Edward Snowden's over there, right? Um, he lost his freedom. He'd be tried and, you know, beheaded or something if he, they could. And this is really scary stuff. This gets back to monarchy. This gets back to feudalism. Uh, this, you know, Hitler stuff. And, um, and a lot like the Inquisition. This is really the... I, I, another guy I was reading last night, but anyhow, this was saying basically Hillary's plan for why she really, it's called New Iran and Syria, well, this was in 2013, Hillary's stated policy was to defend Israel's nuclear monopoly. But yet, why does the media not tell us that Israel is the nuclear monopoly? You're not allowed to say in our supposed free press that Israel even has a nuclear bomb. They have a whole 200 nuclear bombs, all aimed at, at Iran, and their plan was to wage war on on Assad so that you know they could, and that, so that Israel keeps its security, it keeps its nuclear monopoly, it never gets in the news, and because Assange leaks this, just like Snowden leaked it, they they have to be killed, you know, because who's running this show? Israel, the Zionist, and as one guy pointed out, it's more than Zionism, this is Satanism. This started way before Zionism, right? This is purity Satanism. And it's the Antichrist that is behind it. Andy's mentioned that, I think Pat's mentioned it. And if we don't mention it, we gotta diagnose exactly what we're doing here. My goal now is to run for president as the Republican. I have been fleeing the Republicans for the last five years. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, I'm going to be rational, honest Republican. Truth. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln 
and uh, you know Thomas Jefferson Republican because the truth is the Republican Party has been captured by the Satanists and the liars and the deceivers and I think with my southern accent and my southern roots um, you know and my daughter of the I'm a colonial dame I am going to find my voice you know and get out there and and reclaim the American way for America. Because the only way to fix this is from the unitary executive power position. Everything trickles down. If you're in a monarchy or a military state, um, you know, a patriot state, right? You, there's only one commander in chief, and it, you know, we gotta hope it's a rational, honest, you know. May I say? I say I'm a truth seeker. I, I wrote. I, was interchanging with someone, an academic, who writes about this topic. He goes, may I ask, are you a believer? And I, I'm like, I don't want to be called a believer, even though I would say I, I am a seeker <laughs> of, uh, you know, belief. I believe in goodness and a good God, <laughs> much better than an evil God, I, you know. Um, and so I think that's what we have to be, get back to, you know, Thomas Jefferson's uh, said, you know, how does it go? You know, it is universally a, a precept that all men are created equal. You know, we, I mean, this kind of God-given precepts, you know, are, are really, if we had any chance, that's what we have to be based in. And, um, but we, it, what's scary is that this group has, they're working, you know, the Nixon Republican plan work through the Southern strategy, uh, you know, to take over the evangelicals and convince the Southern evangelicals that uh, Repub Trump is a good old boy and, you know, that I'm up here with the communists and uh, the black people and the um, trying to, you know, raise, you know, get their taxes raised or something uh, because I believe in welfare state and I mean I know the the propaganda lie that has been propagated by the you know it's just in the ozone now you know and this so here I'm going to pull back a little bit here you know chapter three market research this is science what is science okay and why I, I came up with this topic about science but the method of me, I basically am a scientist, a, a communication scientist, a social scientist, a research analyst, and the method is that made a million dollars for a company one year was you develop your propaganda campaigns or whatever, you develop your ad campaign by asking people what you, how you see the category. So ideally, this would be a focus group, and I would get an in-depth understanding of what you think and why you think it. And that what they said is that we have to speak to the misinformation or the misperceptions or the attitudes based on misinformation or misunderstanding. Or, um, you know, a lot of us get our politics from our parents. Uh, you know, and. I did, I know, you know, and there's a kind of a, um, it's not easy to go against your parents. They've got all the money and all the power, right? And so you, you kind of just go along with whatever they say. I used to say I became a Republican kind of because I couldn't win an argument with them, you know, and it, I think that's the thing is the arguments are out of context. And so as a market research analyst, what I knew how to do, and I think our government, I need to get the government doing this, is, I, you know, like Kellyanne Conway does market research and she just fakes it. And I think the polls can be faked. But you can ask, do a poll that really wants to know what everybody thinks. You know, what, what are their worries? What's their pain? What's their, and, and the government could be trying to address that. And then, you know, but at least I would go to the CEO of, of you know, Discover Card or the, whoever the client was, and I'd say, this is really what people think. I can say statistically, this is 
why they like you, this is why they don't like you, and this is a, you know, this is why they like the other guy, and maybe if you did what the other guy was doing, you did have competition, you know, then maybe they'd like you. Otherwise, um, the, the subject that's rarely covered, which is why I try to cover it, is the threats. You know, the there's opportunities and threats are the outside of a company or a entrepreneur or whatever, a person, a system. And these, um, these threats, like I said, are, uh, if you can't see them, you can't change them, you know, um, because usually you design these studies for the president, you know, of the company. He's in a position, the supply side, from the top, if he cares about what the people really want and think, you know. But if you look at the policies we have, the wall, the, the, you know, um, these are nothing but the same military divide and conquer policies that Carl Schmitt and Hitler and, and the Zionists do. They separate the Palestinians from the Israelis. If you now, I mean, it's scary to look at really what Zionism is, especially since in this room, I think I've been called a bitch and given the finger and told to go back to Georgia being a anti-Semitic bitch, you know, which, it kind of, you don't expect it, you know, but, um, because you don't expect to be expected because I'm not an anti-Semitic bitch. I am a scientist. I'm just saying we got a problem, you know, if we can't name the problem, you know, it, because there's this kind of uh, meme, you know, out there that um, it kind of denies everything you say is true, you know, before you say it, they've denied it. And, um, and then kind of made sure you lost your job, which, which is actually part of the problem here too, which uh, the research into Israel and the, you know, it was really the Mossad, which was created by the Hitler and the Nazis. They were trained, they really were. Um, you know, and that's why it's really hard for a lot of Jewish people in particular to believe it, because, you know, they've been in denial a long time about it. But there's, they're basically, what am I saying? That um, if, like, Cynthia McKinney mentioned, was a congressman from Georgia, and she mentioned 9-11 and looked at Kissinger right in the face and said, excuse me, would you say, you know, why you were there that day and why you're covering it up and why you paid for it? And, and Kissinger goes, you know, and they, they run a candidate Kissinger quit the commission that day, but, um, you know, which is good. That's what we have to do is hold them accountable. Ask Corliss and say the question they don't want you to say. Say what they don't want you to say. Everything else is PR. You've got to ask the question to their face in a forum when you're on TV that they don't want you to ask. And, and then it might start to wake people up, but as it is, the media people who covered it got fired. And the congresswoman who covered it, they paid for somebody who looks like her, sounds like her, but just made one pledge. And this is Dick Durbin in Illinois did this to Paul Finley. He got, they ran Dick Durbin um, against Paul Finley because Paul Finley dared speak out. He wrote a book about it. They dared speak out. He and Cynthia McKinley and a lot of people, you question Israel, you will be fired. And that's, you look around at, you know, anybody who's fallen by the wayside, everybody who Trump appointed is basically a Zionist agent. You know, that I know because my stepfather, I mailed a letter to him from the American Federal Spectator Foundation and the Manhattan Institute. These, all these NGOs are, are Zionist fronts. You know, um, the people in, I mailed a letter to Rupert Murdoch and the Koch brothers and, and um, Carl Rove and, and the Bushes and, and said, we, you know, look at how great we are. My friend Betsy McCoy is, come, she's, we're taking on affordable care. They're the one that orchestrated it to the Supreme Court with the expectation that it would be cut right there by, except, you know, John Roberts, you know, managed to call it a tax and save the day. It might be because I was, I was sending texts, letters to him and tagging him that day saying, um, you know, John Roberts, I know you're with Betsy McCoy and I know all the people and I know that you orchestrated 
this Supreme Court case, just so you could kill this liberal, um, you know, welfare, health, education, and welfare, gone. You know, they think, you know, that's pri not privatized. Let's privatize everything, right? Free market, privatize the whole thing. If it's public, put a little Hitler mustache on it, you know, and that's what they do. And I, I know Betsy did it, and I was asking questions. I'm like, how do I stop this? And they, I go, lawyer, will you help me? I'm, I'm trying to find lawyers. I'm not taking on those guys. You know, the Zionists, the, you know, Ted Olson and Ken Starr was writing for the Tribune during the um, Spanish-American War and tr telling both sides of the stories got fired. And he goes, that's censorship, you know? When they're not telling both sides of the story. They're not telling, they're only telling the fascist side, basically. That's what we're getting from the Tribune and the Republicans. And sadly, I found out that there is a thoroughly corrupt, you know, Republican Party that has, you know, solidified too. And um, it, you kind of, you find out, you know, Kaczynski, you know, had worked with Carter and, you know, so that poor Carter, I don't think he knew what he was doing, just like poor Kennedy, I don't think he knew what hit him, you know, who was assassinated. It was the Zionist, it was the CIA, you know, and it was all covered up, right? And that's what we do. That's what Nazis and that's what military states do it. We have got to stop this military state, but we can't do it until we have cops who will blow the whistles and FBI guys like Charlie, whoever he's working for, the 300, did you say, or the Committee of the 300, or the GSA, they are not allowed to tell the truth. Those are orders, right? You're, Charlie took on Andy here and said, I, you know, you're not allowed. Andy, you know, and you're in the military. There's a law against telling the truth, right? We, I ordered you to stand down, you know? I ordered you to shut up, and or else you're stuck in, under Charlie. You get legal care under Charlie if you try to say something. That That's why, you know, I'm trying to break in there. My goal is now, I mean, Lori's there. I wrote, I went up to, to J.B. Pritzker. I said, let me be your market research person. He goes, I like that idea, Citizen yeah. Survey Act, and um, uh, Citizen Satisfaction Survey. Well, then the next week I saw that he was a 25% investor in Lincoln Yards. I'm like, uh-oh, I don't think Pritzker wants to hire me, you know? And, and that's how Obama and Hillary and Rahm Emanuel, who is, he, he might be the Satan one that they're planning to bring up, the Messiah. Um, Rahm Emanuel, his father, you know, was an ear gun, stern group terrorist. And it, why does the media not cover it? Well, because, you know, Chris Bolin covers it, but he gets tasered. They don't want to get tasered. The lawyers are afraid to say anything. The, mil the newspapers are afraid to say anything. A lot of people are afraid. You know, um, I'm not. I'm the only one I know that's not afraid. And, you know, I don't know why. I think it's because he's, I'm an adult child of a Republican family. And, you know, I, I really hate the fact that they ran off with my money and their deception. And I know that... My ancestors, this isn't what we were, you know. It, there's, I think every family has, I know, I looked at my ancestors, like, these are Robert E. Lee types, right? The, the Lees came over, since I've got the audience, I'm going to keep talking. Robert E. In, Robert e um, the Lees, I just find this amazing. Five minutes, okay. And, and the, you know, under, you know, King Henry VIII was married to Anne Boleyn. He, he threw out the church and changed it. Anne Boleyn's lady of waiting was Margaret Wyatt Lee. And then, and Thomas Wyatt, so my ancestors come from that side on my grandmother's side, my father's mother's side. On the other side, Thomas Wyatt, they were sister and brother on my mother's side. How can that happen? But they really were. My on my mother's grandmother's side and my father's mother's side, I they were sister and brothers. But they they saw, you know, they were they were like sister and brother to Anne Boleyn, and her head was cut off. They, the you know, the Catholics convinced Henry that she was a witch, and therefore he could cut off her head. She carried the head off of the thing and said the prayer. But I think in our family there was a deep deep fear 
of the Catholics and the Inquisition and the, the ways the satanic forces of evil can come in and, you know, convince them to cut off your sister's head or burn them at the stake. Thomas Wyatt was, his son was burned at the stake. And so, you know, for defending somebody. But, but what came out of that then is you've got Robert E. Lee and Richard Henry Lee, the scholars. And these guys really did, and you know, they're, I've been watching Jamestown. There are, there's always going to be these forces of evil and there's going to be you know the federalists were the forces of evil that thomas jefferson and richard henry lee who helped write the declaration of independence and white horse larry lee was the father these guys knew that we have to stick with the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and we have got you know it's a group conscience right it's it, if we are divided, it could be really easy for them to, within my own family, we were divided and conquered. I tried to keep my sister, so I was gonna write, you know, adult child Republican family. I've got, you know, the Trump who stole the money and the New Gingrich that don't get it over there. But, you know, the truth is, I lean into it and I'm, I'm gonna get work with my crazy dysfunctional family to stick to the truth because you know what's the alternative right influence those you can and it's all about influence campaigning right and you know ideally it would be regulated for the citizens protection act or and the fairness doctrine the honest services laws but um let's let's stick together on this okay that's All right, Ellen, I'd like to know if things are so bad here, uh, what country do you think might be a little bit more applicable to a person like you moving to? That's what someone, another girl asked me that the other day, and I, it's so crazy, but I'll answer it. Is, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't even make sense because my country that I came over here before your family did, right, is... I'm asking that we stick to the truth. And I like this country. I'm trying to save this country from foreign invasion by the evil ones. They have infiltrated the sea. The, the Gell, Reinhard Gellin brought all the Nazi worst war criminals to start our CIA. And it's now the BND and the Mossad who Benny is talking about with the CNN. You know, they, they surveil us as a police state. So I am trying to save this country, right? And there is no other country I, that, I tell you, we, we're ruling all the other ones. And so when we're evil, we're the biggest threat to peace on earth. So I am not moving anywhere. Thank you. What's the reason why we do the wars? What's the reason why we go to wars? What's the, the reason oil? why we go to war? The oil. What? The oil. For oil. Yeah, that's right. And that is a big part of the... The agenda of the Federalist Society, what, these are military industrial complex, the, um, and, the, and the Rothschilds made money by financing both sides of the wars. So, and they're still, they finance both sides of the elections. And all over, you know, the dirty wars in Iran, this is the communists in Vietnam, they're financing both sides. That keeps us going because the, the nuclear power and the lot of money and, you know, Israel sold the weapons to Iran and then they, you know, wage war, you know, and, and now we've got a $21 trillion debt and um, growing, right? So that's, uh, that's they're, the 1% are getting rich and now they, they orchestrate the false flag 9-11 attacks. So now they've got unitary executive power and it may be we can stop them if Bernie Sanders' plan for the War Authorization Act, we, it did finally pass Congress and the Senate. Trump says he's going to veto it. Because, gosh, talk about, there's a book, Conservatives Without Conscience. This, John Dean wrote the book. And these guys are without conscience and smug and proud of it. And so, you know, war makes money. <laughs> Actually, 
William Casey, our head of CIA, who was in the OSS, said, we will know we've been successful with our disinformation campaign when 75% of the people are misinformed. And you can measure that statistically. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Over here, I, I don't know, he's had his up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to me, you seem to be morally evil. You have a lot of simil similarities to Hitler. Are you an anti-Semite? Let me ask you, are you anti-Semite? You call them anti-Christ. You call them Satanists, Zionists. Are you an anti-Semite? No, I, no way. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with it. I'm anti-Zionist. And I, I went to a talk on Zionism, but just because I've studied the Zionists, we went to a talk on the pre-Zionists, and really, it, you know, most, if you say you're anti-Zionist, you might as well be anti-Semitic. But it's my, my best friend who, she says, my best friends are Jewish. You know, and really Zionism, I've got a book, is a war on the Jews. So I am your anti-Semitic if you, Klaus, if you label me anti-Semitic. I would say, look at yourself. Who are you calling Satan? You, I'm saying, I, I said there is a Satanist movement that really, in fact, was behind Herschel. It's the Illuminati. Rothschild, he happened to be Jewish, but I'm not saying all Jews are Rothschild. I'm just saying Rothschild was a Jew, and Rothschild happens to fund all the all the banks and all the wars for the last 400 years. They put they had a deliberate strategy of being. They bought our central bank, our Federal Reserve. Read the creature from Jekyll Island. Okay, he happened to be Jewish. Okay, I, he could have been. Alan Dulles was evil. He's a Southern Presbyterian. I'm not saying all Southern Presbyterians are, are you know, victim, you know, are, you know, prejudiced yeah. against. Are you against Southern Presbyterians? Are you an antichrist? No, you I say there Jews, is an antichrist. You call Jews antichrist. I did but, not. I did not. I said there an antichrist is behind it. Oh, if a yeah, Jew chooses yeah. to get behind an antichrist, which is a concept, I mean, it's a philosophy of waging war on the world, and goodness, just like the devil himself. But there is actually in the Talmud a whole lot of evidence about, I mean, in all this Zion thing, and you can read it one way or another way, but I think the Jews would do very well to start talking about it amongst themselves, which is largely why I'm involved with an interface coalition against racism and, and for peace and for, against, for criminal justice reform, and the Sinai Church is an active member of it. And there's the Jewish Voice for Peace that I'm a member of, and there's also a lot of liberal people this, uh, against this Rabbi Mir Kelhane, and he covered up, you know this guy's a racist. Everybody admits and inherits that he's a racist, right? And he is the one that worked with our, um, the, uh, the the spy who was just let out, Pollard, Jonathan Pollard, is working with the Russians. You want to know who the Russians were? Pollard was selling all the nuclear bomb sites in, of the United States. Basically, Israel and Russia are waging war on America. But if we expose that, oh, that would make them treason. Oh, maybe they'd have to go take the death penalty rather than Julian Assange. So they'd rather destroy all the truth so to protect the evil, I think I'd rather identify the evil and protect the truth. And any person of conscience would agree with me. I hope you would agree with me. All right. Next, right there. Okay. Speaking of the uh, truth, you mentioned uh, several times, uh, you know, the uh, uh, perfidious Rothschilds, uh, my word, not yours. And uh, are you aware of the fact that um, if the Rothschilds were so... Uh, well connected with the Nazis, are you aware of the fact that several members of the Rothschild family died in concentration camps and all of the Rothschild's money couldn't get them out of those camps? I mean, are you, are you if they were that, if they were that well connected, well, you know, would they not have found a way out? Others did. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, it's hard to imagine one, but uh, you know, I mean, anybody that's evil, it, it really is hard to understand. But, um, and you know, the the Catholic Inquisition, I think people would agree, was a very evil group. And there was a lot of alliance with, um, you know, the 
I don't know that, that there, you know, Jew, there's evil Jewish people and good Jewish people, and the evil ones don't have any problem fucking over the good ones. Just That's to the set thing. the words, uh -huh. uh, just to set the record straight, are you aware that at one point the Protestant Inquisition, and there was one, uh, were just as vigorous yeah. in sending Catholics to the stake as yeah. we were in I sending agree. Protestants. I don't to think the stake. anybody. I don't think we want that kind of religious warfare, you know, going on, which is really what is behind our, we've got a religious war between the Republicans and the Democrats now, you know, and it really is, you know, I, the, I, that's what I'm talking about, is we need to have freedom of speech and association and the press, and it needs to be above board rather than covertly, these are called covert operations, and Truman Run. said after Run. Kennedy was assassinated, he looked at the paper and he goes, oh my God, it was us. And he said, I never meant when I signed the National Security Act of 1948 for this covert operations to turn into a little inquisition, you know, war. Covert operations led to dirty wars in South America and Iran. Their first thing was to orchestrate the Iranian uh, overthrow, the coup. And that's when they, you know, they put in the prints and... Roosevelt thought, oh, what a great coup this was because, look, we didn't lose any lives. We just regime change. We just take it over. And that's what we're doing all over the world now. You can look at William Bloom's book of the CIA and Rogue State, and you just look at all the countries. I mean, we killed millions and, and you know, millions and millions and millions. Our CIA was behind all the torture. I mean, this is just as bad. I mean, as, you know, they said six million Holocaust. That was really a war on the communist Jews and the communist Romanians and the communist women and the and the and, and the truth tellers and the Christians. You know, I am opposed to any state-sponsored terrorism. But if we can't fight state-sponsored terrorism unless the state has to admit that the state is sponsoring the terrorism, even though it's the biggest open secret we've got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said that uh, this Assange is going to get the death penalty. They're trying. They he could. They can't. No. Why not? If you go to Britain, they will not extradite you if you're going to get the death penalty. Oh, well then they'll That's fix that. That's how that guy that killed uh, Martin Luther King got out of the death penalty. Because if they didn't, they would not extradite them back to the U.S. They can crank up old Sparky. Uh, yeah, well, they have more ways than one of, yeah. you know, dis I think the, someone the needs to start the 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 Well, no, but the truth is, the way, when they do this kind of thing, well, one, it, it silences everybody. It's like the Ku Klux Klan, the Mafia, um, all these people work together on this Kennedy stuff, right? And even the guy that that did kill Martin Luther King. I mean, he didn't kill him, right? I mean, the ones that, the, they were not lone wolves. These were all orchestrated attacks. And there, I, there's some really good stuff that come out on Martin Luther King's um, thing, but you, they even have it that the police, Martin Luther King was still alive when they got him to the hospital. And they went in, the nurse admitted this. They told the nurse to get out of there. Or, or to stand away, and they saw the two guys spit on him and call him a nigger. You know, that's who killed Martin Luther King. It was racist, mafia, Ku Klux Klan cops, just like we've got in Chicago, just like we've got in Georgia, just like we've got in the FBI, just like we've got in the CIA. The CIA is organized crime. It is the mafia. And I am not, I'm sick of protecting them because if there's nobody, we'll prosecute them. They're afraid to prosecute them. They're afraid to investigate them. They're afraid to tell the truth about them. Right, Charlie? Oh, you got a point. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, boy, Charlie. Charlie, what's your question? Yeah, I spent a number of years in the Soviet Union. Go in the library school to become a reference librarian, and I went to any number of library conventions, and we had no classes. Nobody talked about any any information that wasn't true. 
That, well, that's is, not true. I, the truth is, I mean, there can be censored information. We don't have any classes on... On censorship? I, well, we, we did on prop... On, yeah, we did, but not nothing you're talking about. We, we studied... Well, this is that's suppressed, why, white it out. That's the whole point. Well, my, it the is. Are all, like, naive? Or? No, no. They're, <laughs> Charlie, I don't think everybody's as simple as you like to think they are, you know? Um, right? There. This... It's, I actually, the web of deceit, I went to a special library conference. My specialty is also library research. And the, SL, the Independent Information <laughs> Professionals and the Special Librarians Association got together and wrote a book called The Web of Deceit. And this is, co this is covered extensively. And I wanted, that's the conference I wanted to be at this week because it's, I hadn't realized how relevant it is what we, we should organize. At one point, the Society for Competitive Intelligence Professionals called me and said, what should be, we should be researching? And this is really what they should come together as an association, as the public relations um, a society that I'm a member of, they should be standing up <coughs> against lobbying and um, you know public relations. Oh, there, is, there was an act in 1913 called the Gillette Amendment, which still stands it says the president cannot conduct public relations out of the president's office because it will lead to an abuse of power, which is exactly what it is. He is a 100% PR. He might as well be on Fox News all the time. And there, you know, there were laws against that. There is a law, but I can't get anybody to enforce it. That's why I'm speaking up like this as much as I am. Okay. Uh, okay. The last one, okay. There's yeah. two here. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, Ellen, um, the topic of the talk was to be about the war on science that we have in this. In this it's country. really a war on truth. A yeah. war on truth. So, and that is coming from the top. And the Republicans, of course, are complicit in that. And uh, do you think that, you know, at this point, are, are we stuck with maybe having to hope that the Democrats will be able to do something uh, <coughs> along with our protests that we're going to continue with. Well, let me do it first. Yeah, and um, that, you know, I do, you know, um, I think we need to have a grassroots bottom up, you know, we are protesting, um, mostly Democrats and socialists and democratic socialists and um, young people independence I think you know 40 percent of the population are independent which is kind of what I always was but um, you know it I think that's the thing is the party has got they're not investigating themselves and I there should be laws I, I think we assume the Democrats would counter the Republicans but they don't and you know they're public they're both just there's this kind of oppositional dynamic you know um, controlled opposition so that Mm -hmm. Mostly the true issues aren't even getting, they don't percolate to the media, which is what I, I say the problem really could be fixed at the level of the media needs to be responsive, put back in the fairness doctrine. Yep. Right? And Andy, you want to say some Historian, of that? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You asked the, the answer to your question, uh, Jim, Jim Mars said there's three ways to remove a politician from office the soapbox, the ballot box, in the ammo box. And the French reached what we call the French moment where they just put up guillotines and started cutting heads off. They said, we're not paying for you for being in prison for the rest of your life. And if we're not going to reach the French moment, then all of us have to accept that if there's 300 million of us, each, ha each of us has a piece of responsibility for what these taxpayer-supported criminals are doing in the Senate and the Congress. And so uh, we can vote them out. And you, the Sunrise Movement showed that an army of young people got progressives elected it was totally under the radar of the media. And it can happen again if people get involved and vote, vote out criminals. That's, it's just that simple. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Like a public oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. education campaign, I, I agree that climate change and also justice Democrats, Andy told me yeah. about, are what voted, got supported ACO or AOC. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, so they couldn't get any of their own selves elected. They got started, Charlie. Don't keep ragging on people. That, that's not right. One, one fool at a time. Right. 
Right. But they slayed the election? But yeah, it, they did. They got progressives they elected. They couldn't get themselves elected. They're basically the left wing, you know. Nice I mean, group. there's been a war on the liberal movement for a long time, you know, is what um, George Seldes, you know, showed. And um, that's why they used to, it's really a wonderful movie, Tell the Truth and Run, the George Seldes story. Um, you, it, it cost $150 on Amazon. I've noticed the pattern of if, if the right wing doesn't like the article, they make it, Amazon charges $500 for it and um, makes it hard. But you can get it on Prime, um, you know, digitalized. But it, he showed how, see, the supply side, I, supply side means the corporations, and it should be demand and supply. But the old days before, you know, marketing, if you just, you know, give it to them, they will come. You know, make it, they will come. That's all supply side, and it, uh, that's the problem. Because, I mean, if you notice there's, I don't know, I mean, the, the demand isn't being heard. And market research is about consumer citizen bottom-up demand for justice. And if they're not listening, it's hard. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. He wanted to ask a question. Uh, last question there. All right. Partly anticipated by asking about science, but... Uh, <sighs> I was a little curious too, uh, just on the, in, in a sea of many things that you've spoken about tonight, um, when it comes to Julian Assange, because WikiLeaks was aiding the Trump campaign in 2015 and 2016, uh, you know, is, is he some innocent victim or has he been circle jerking our orange fascist president, pardon my language? I, I think he, um, I, you know, I've heard, read two things of him, and I really am always investigating it, trying to get to the truth. And I do think that he, he, I remember when this was kind of taking place in that August, you know, around that time, he really, his methodology um, was really just give me the data and I'll publish it, you know, so he really is just a leaking channel. It's just like an app, you know, and, um, I, but I do think part of the reason they're prosecuting him now is because it is kind of connected to the Mueller, you know, basically Oliver or um, Roger Stone, or somebody like him. Um, Rob, I think it might have been Rahm Emanuel who gave him the. They say that it was somebody <laughs> internal gave it to um, WikiLeaks, so maybe they think they have Thank to you. ask him. I think it's probably Rahm Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel put Monica Lewinsky on on. Uh, you know, he's a Democrat, but he put him on, he's really loyal to Israel, and that's where the problem gets to be. And there is a law against FISA foreign agents. You can't be an influencer from a foreign country, and so, um, but they only prosecuted like four of those cases. So, uh, you know, part of it, it's really mostly an inconvenience. But the, some people say Julian Assange was CIA, and he could have been CIA. He, a lot of, almost everybody is probably, you know. Um, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Julian, if you haven't watched it, it's on the internet now about Ju the stories in Julian Assange. The reason they want to bring him back and prosecute him is Julian Assange leaked a video of one of our gunships using journalists and innocent people as target practice in Iraq, and they were laughing about it when they did. And they, they, that's, oh, yeah. that's Julian I put that out. his main crime. He blew the whistle on massive crimes against humanity that are going all over Iraq by our, our soldiers just, you know, using people for target practice. It's crimes against humanity. It's unacceptable. And that they don't ever want that to see the light of day in America. That's his We crime. have to start the rebuttal else. period. We're going to go to so rebuttal now. Trump. So we have our, to get uh, to rebuttal. a big hand, please. All right. All right. All right. All right. If everybody would get your hand up, who wants to give a rebuttal? Let me get a head count so we don't have five or other people coming up. <coughs> Want to run out of time? One, two. I'm counting three on this side. Only three, you know, four. Okay, five, six. Six people want to give a rebuttal. Right? Me is seven. And Tim, you had your hand up, right? Yeah, I did. And I want to. I want to go after this guy That's real eight. quick. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, three and a half minutes for everybody. Three and a half. Yeah, three and a half. Get over there. I think this is your first rebuttal I've ever seen. He's rebuttal uh, before. Here, here are some proposals of the Green New Deal. The uh, 
They want affordable public transportation for all with the goal of replacing every combustion engine vehicle. They want... Um, That's what I want. Uh, subsidies, for, they, they, they want the elimination of cows and, and subsidies for those unwilling to work. They want subsidies for people unwilling to work. And they want a carbon tax, a tax on all driving, uh, a tax on people who drive a vehicle, if they still have one. And uh, minimize air travel. Uh, they, they want high speed trains. It's going to yeah. replace planes. You believe that? Yeah. I don't believe it. And uh, uh, the, the Democrats, especially the progressives, want to uh, promote the end of the world scare tactics. And they have been doing this for decades. When the world, when the world doesn't end, the Democrats, like Nostradamus, have have uh, move on to their next prediction. Yeah. Okay, right. so, and uh, Alexander uh, Cortez claims the world will end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. Uh, the environmentalist, Georgia, you know, is, the, is that capitalism is the Earth's number one enemy, yeah. and they advocate ecological groups for the UN world government. The, uh, yeah. the, the, the UN wants world government. That's why they're bringing all these immigration people in. Just a couple more. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the objective, the objective of, of this big government is to rob us of our freedoms and spend trillions of dollars on a made-up problem about uh, some, some of climate change, what they're, what they're talking about. Uh, 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 they, the pro 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 progressives want to ditch the patri patriarchal model of wealth and, and status, which they say have constituted through nearly all of the expansionist, expansionist war-making and, and, and resource-depleting societies of the past 10,000 years. That, that's what the progressives are saying. Yeah. The GOP must have persuasive policy responses or the progressive model will be, we, will be the eventual model for the for a federal Green New Deal. So the uh, Republicans got to get together and get a good policy to fight these lies. <laughs> All right. You don't think high-speed trains? I uh, want to show you guys something. You're saying the state, you're saying that we lack access to media, that we don't have a choice. I want you to take a look at the computer, for example. First off, here we are. PressTV.org, once it comes up, if we can get net access here again. Yeah, we are. Uh, that, once it comes up, that'll be the state model of Iranian television. Just a few clicks away once we have net access. Here, we have our College of Complexes. But watch, watch what happens when I put in the uh, BBC. We can get their live feed right away. Okay? Watch what happens when I put in CLTV, which is a China Central News Agency. CGTV. Yeah, C, C, um, yeah, uh, CCTV. CCTV. CGTV. No, C, China Central Television, CCTV. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. The CC, that's what. They have a logo? That's the surveillance cameras. Yeah. No, there, there's a lot. Uh, I'll just do it this way. Yeah, there's a lot of choices, but the people don't come together. You see, and the thing is, you can go yeah. almost anywhere. It's hard to get cons uh, the people thing smart. Is, let's take a look at Andy's particular site that he likes so much. What is it, Smirking Chip? Common Dreams. Common Dreams, Smirking Chip. Yeah, how informed are the people, though? Uh, the thing is, you have to educate yourself a little bit. There's so much out there that it's called uh, learning a few things. Um, a lot of world world. us... One more at a time. A lot of us don't take the time to really get out of our bubble of ignorance, so to speak. I think a lot of us do, a lot of us care about censorship. What are the editorial policies of these sites? Do you know? 
I don't, but I'm saying. Well, a then, lot. why are you recommending sites? I'm you don't know what it is. My mm -hmm. point, Charlie, is that most of this stuff is available. There's our so common what? dreams. It's What's great. Yeah. It's great time. time. And here's another one, too, that we can pull into. Yeah. You look for know. Benny. Go to the YouTube and look at Benny. You're recommending books you at, haven't what, read. Benny you and Assange. No, Charlie, these are all sites I've gone to a number of times. So what do you know about them? Don't I they? know that China you Central Television them. is normally wrong. I know that... Uh, oh. Oh, that's your point? Well, the point of the matter is there's a lot of places to get truth and untruth out of here. But if you really dig, you can find the truth. And I know that the one thing about you have truth. No criteria test you're using. Watch what. Okay, you let's let's do it. let's do something about socialism in Sweden. Come on. Okay, watch you, this. Are people paid like to China, deceive? You don't like China, so you don't like. Dumb us down. No, is we're what not. What you're telling me. Misinform. You're you're misinformed, you Charlie. If you didn't like Lithuania, you wouldn't like Lithuania TV. The heckling session section of this. The heckling section. Let me, let me let me give me an extra minute, Andy. We're gonna try. Something. Is the three minutes up yet? One time. Um, Jim, you're the, All right, now, let me, uh, <laughs> before we stop, the computer is available for your rebuttals. If you need some help on it, yeah. what I'm simply saying is that, uh, Charlie, <coughs> you know, in our rebuttal sessions, my point of the matter is there's a vast array of information everywhere. And if you go dig a little bit, even on a tertiary level, you're going to find a lot of truth and a lot of misinformation at the same time. You need to check it out and research it. Let me tell you what we did in library school. That's fine. We had a book of three years. No, we went up to the library. Come on up, Charlie. Come on up. 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 And these range everywhere from dictionaries to appendices to everything. And they call on me and say, tell me about this book. And I had to tell them when it began. If you detail, you say I have three by five cards. I had every reference I book that. issued that was memorized. <laughs> and I could answer it. And then they had a, was that truth that the information they provided credible and accurate. Good. And would you purchase it? Was it worth the money? And it wasn't just, well, I read it. If I said, well, I kind of looked at the book, I liked it. We, you know, that's a way I never of said that. Paydock. You have to assess the information. How what? often, who did the information? How did they gather it? How many people work on this thing? How many years has it been around? That's what I mean. I was looking at some of the sites that Andy recommends and stuff like this. And let's go down and see what is the editorial policy. Mm -hmm. Some guys just collect articles. <laughs> Anybody's article. They don't That's have right. any reporters. Some do. Some have people that is send in way? stuff. I can get this in. So you have, yes, no. looking at what it is, the truth out, whatever, mm -hmm. some of these sites that encapsulate the YouTube information, what Benny information are they gathering? Down the link. If I have a reference book, down the link. how <laughs> accurate is the information in that reference book? We knew for a fact, and they actually would use them. Furthermore, they would use them for three to five years before at, at specific universities, and then the reference librarians would give an assessment, thumbs up or thumb down. Not all reference books. Because I actually worked for a publisher, and they put out reference books, and I said, these are basically worthless for information. He said, who cares? He was out making money. <laughs> and they worked, I'm serious, I only worked from here. People would call up and say, what kind of, I spent, and it was expensive. Enormously expensive, and people thought they were getting accurate information. And it only, it's like, like it, it's like, how often is the information revised? How often are these articles updated? Do they have reporters? Do they have onboard staffs? <laughs> Are they getting from freelancers? I noticed Tribune is getting, it's not, not got full-time reporters. They're getting freelancers. Well, do you think the quality of their writing is going to be better by just purchasing articles from people out there needing a buck? Stuff like this. That's what I mean. you got to keep your eye on this information. But anyhow, that's basically it. the same thing with websites. That's right. And you got up here and say, well, I don't like it. And I go, on what basis don't you like it? My and I heard what well, I read. There. 
God, my, thank my, you. My point oh, is, come on. Oh, Charlie. That's no criteria at all. Oh, I didn't like that. I think you're not paying I didn't like you. All right, next, please. My name is Doug Binkley, and you may even know um, I've um, been with the resistance against Donald Trump. And um, uh, Ellen's a good friend of mine. Um, she's um, uh, been part of the resistance against Trump, too. I think she would include herself um, as that. And she does many other things, including you know, going after these uh, uh, cops that are getting away with murder, literally. And um, she has a wide-ranging um, mind. She researches a lot. She um, involves herself with so many topics. But uh, in my question, I really was kind of trying to get at, like, we all need to focus. We all need to get down to brass tacks um, with, with the great threat that's, uh, that's um, our, affecting our nation here uh, with these fascists, with these Republicans that are some, yeah, some because I cases are fascists, I uh, very willing fascists, or they're fascist light, or they're just fascists look the other way, don't see any evil. Um, and the Democrats are not a whole lot better, but we, do, we did make progress in the last election in the sense of electing more progressives. Uh, to the Congress. Um, but the Senate is just, because of the Founding Fathers and um, the slavery at the time, uh, wanting to um, give uh, an excess of representation to the smaller states and the southern states, uh, they really threw a grenade into the future. Um, and we're having to fall at it or something. I mean, what, what, what will we do if, uh, again, um, an election is lost because of the uh, so-called electoral college, which um, the, the people who get elected to that um, didn't necessarily go to college. And they're, necessarily not, they're not seeking the truth, like, like Ellen is and like I am. Um, the war against science, the war against truth, that's the main thing we have to fight against. And we are facing this threat of climate change. And uh, we have to focus on a few things in this struggle. And um, although there are so many uh, things going on, and, um, and I agree um, with the fact that um, you know, Israel has become so powerful and so influential in our country and our government, uh, uh, and to the extent that they're vilifying this um, uh, Muslim um, Congress lady that she just said some things that are perfectly reasonable and I agree with them but um, people are getting vilified for just being a little bit out of not using the best language that will be persuasive to the most people let me put it that way and so we have to be very careful uh, I'm trying to be careful about um, trying to be more persuasive from my end in the fight um, of, uh, being able to control myself and yeah. and not go off in tangents and not go off on um, in ways that I mean let, let us focus on supporting science let us focus on supporting the truth let us focus on pushing back against despotism or would be despotism let us focus on um, resistance where we can um, where we can get uh, the attention of people um, by uh, using the means that have been used by on, activists in the past uh, uh, in favor of social justice and, and, and real freedom, the freedom of uh, basic people and not the freedom of uh, libertarians and oligarchs to just uh, glory it over everybody else. Okay, thank you. Are you going to tell us what you've done here? You can't talk to us yet. You guys are afraid of the truth. This guy is taking this forever. It's just life, man. Try to go about three and a half. Thanks, Ellen. This week, 
uh, we were subjected to a vile, shameful lie that journalists are criminals and war criminals are political slash military slash financial slash legal authorities who can self-appoint themselves as rulers of planet Earth and decide what George Orwell's premise in the book 1984 was, those who control the past control the future, those who control the present control the past. Um, I did some media research as best I could as an amateur media researcher this week by watching C-SPAN, BBC, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. All corporate sponsored television stations, uh, except C-SPAN. Uh, and then I read non-corporate print media. I read the Nation, I read Mother Jones, I read The Progressive, I read Z Magazine, I read Jacobin, I read ISR, I read Ms. I read The, I read the Humanist, and uh, it seems to be two separate realities, two separate universes. On the corporate funded side, war of aggression is now normalized and legal. Torture is now re normalized and legal. Rendition is now normalized and legal. Kidnappings are now normalized and legal. Disappearances are now normalized and legal. Resource claiming are now normalized and legal. Secret court trials are now normalized and legal. Illegal surveillance is now normalized and legal. Ignoring international borders is now normalized and legal according to those corporate sources, especially the television sources. Um, and I saw the memory of Edward R. Murrow torn through the mud, the memory of I.F. Stone torn through the mud, the memory of Walter Cronkite torn through the mud, the memory of Gary Webb, those of you who remember San Jose Mercury News torn through the mud, mud reputation as a journalist, Julian Assange, was not arrested, as I saw on these corporate TV airwaves, he was illegally abducted from a residence of political asylum. So when we hear people who are uh, captive audience watching television saying, oh, he was abducted, he was arrested, he must have done a crime. Yeah. He wasn't arrested, he was illegally abducted. You have the right to political asylum if you're being criminalized by a criminal state. Uh, if, if, uh, if you would like to read a book about it, one of them I would suggest is called The WikiLeaks Files, The World According to U.S. Empire by Verso Publishing. Uh, it talks about how journalism is now illegal and warmongering is now pretty much acceptable, I guess. And there's a film called Risk by Laura Poitras who pretty much uh, says the same thing. Uh, yeah, that's my time, unfortunately. Uh, what, what, I, what, what I would have wished to see on corporate media, uh, but I wasn't too shocked, I didn't see, was uh, the WikiLeaks uh, classified U.S. military video that showed in graphic, horrifying detail the murder of over a dozen people, including two Reuters news staff in the Iraqi suburb of New Baghdad. Uh, the video was quickly known as collateral murder. The recording clearly captured one of the U.S. helicopter crewmen explain, oh yeah, look at those dead bastards. After multiple rounds of 30 millimeter cannon fire left nearly a dozen bodies littering the street. To most people, the dehumanizing attitude towards murdering innocent civilians displayed in the video was shocking. But to journalists working in Iraq throughout the U.S.-led occupation, this type of callous behavior was just another day at the office while reporting from the front lines of empire. And there is more and more and more in the back in the flyers that I made photocopies of. Thank you, Ellen. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Jonathan. Uh, look at all this. Wow. Okay. Uh, you'll forgive me for uh, making some opening remarks here, but I found rather interesting uh, what you were saying about your connection with, uh, your family's connection with uh, Aunt Bolin. Uh, my name, Butler, is connected to the Butler's uh, 
in Ireland, and uh, Anne Boleyn's mother's name was Butler. It's entirely possible you and I my friend, maybe distant cousins. All right, well, check it out. Ancestry.com. Yeah. And although you're distantly related to Robert E. Lee, I had an ancestor in that same conflict, and he cool. was most interested in meeting Robert E. Lee. Yeah. Oh, he really? Was, he was wearing a movie. On the other side. Okay. <laughs> it is a small world. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I think we have to not lose sight of. We as Americans have the right to protest and work for changes in government and its conduct. Uh, but we do not have the right to steal information which is going to put our fellow Americans in mortal danger. That then becomes something entirely different. Uh, treason is generally defined in the law books is giving aid and comfort to the enemy in the presence of several people. Uh, I am not saying that he should be tried uh, for treason. I am saying, however, that there is such a thing as responsible protest that aims for the heart of the matter and isn't doing this for the sake of, uh, you know, some more sensationalism. People die because of that. During World War II, there was a famous poster. As a matter of fact, I've got one of them. And uh, it shows a ship going halfway down into the water. And it says, loose lips sink ships. Uh, there's another poster that I have, uh, which shows a dog next to an American flag. And it simply says, because he talked irresponsibly. The point of the matter is, we have a responsibility as Americans to fight for what we consider to be the right without endangering our own people. That we do not have the right to do. We may have the right to endanger our country's enemies, that's something else. But we do not have the right to endanger the guy down the street, you know, uh, the lady who rides on the L with you in the morning. That kind of thing. Uh, we have to be responsible, and if that sounds a little bit wonky, the fact of the matter is I've been at several funerals that of people who uh, suffered as a result of stupid wars. Uh, I don't want to see any more of those. Uh, I don't want to go to any more of those funerals. I don't think any of us do, those that, that have known people that have been injured in these, in these conflicts. At the same time, we do have a right to make our wishes known as far as government's uh, conduct. They're answerable to us. We don't have to behave like a bunch of Neanderthals. <laughs> we have a number of people here who are intelligent enough to know what needs to be done, which congressional buttons to be pressed, that kind of thing. Uh, all, I'm, all I'm arguing for at this point is not to make martyrs and heroes out of the wrong people. <laughs> the martyrs and heroes are very often the guys who tried to stop this and they lost their arms or their legs or their eyes on battlefields. Enough of that. Enough Americans have suffered we have a responsibility not to add to the list. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good a bit of advice for our speaker. If you not want to be called an uh, anti-Semitic or an anti-Semite, I would refrain from using phrases like Rothschilds, the bankers, Zionism, Zionist agent, very close to other phrases like Satanist. Uh, a lot of uh, talk against monopolies. Uh, government has a monopoly on force. Uh, national, so nationalizing industry essential, essentially creates monopolies. Uh, uh, police, you know, a lot of talk of police abuse. Um, maybe if you don't want a monopoly in police, we can have competing crime deterrence agencies that are operating on the market for our justice. Uh, dollars. 
Uh, now on to some important matters. April 15th is tax day. It's the day that we fork over a percentage of the fruits of our labor to that omniscient highwayman, the state. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys know that taxation is theft? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. If Charlie were to mug someone, we would be correct and call him a thief. If Charlie and a few of his buddies were to mug someone and say it's for the mass transit or the schools or for spreading democracy overseas or for the needy, we would still be correct in calling him a thief. No. Taxation is an inherently violent act. If you don't pay, men with weapons will come to take you away. Abolish the IRS. Taxation is theft. Thank you. Yay. All right. Thank you, Bill. There's a, there's a lot of what I agree with I'm, I'm related to uh, uh, traitors. I mean, if you have people who are uh, working against the general interests of the country and the military and the national security, there are certainly examples of people who are clearly uh, uh, violating uh, their loyalty and their uh, and uh, trust. Uh, the, the phrase, uh, loose lips sinks your ships, was used in World War II, and uh, to some degree there has a lot of truth but there are also examples of where um, that's not true. In the beginning of the war, uh, when uh, Germany found out that uh, Japan was going to launch their December 7th attack, uh, the Hitler actually directed uh, Avril Donuts to uh, launch, send some submarines over to America, and this happened in January. So we literally had ships sinking within sight of our cities. People on the beaches in Miami, people in Manhattan were seeing ships exploding and burning just off their shores. This is in January, less than about a month after Pearl Harbor. And the reason that was happening, and the reason that there were really no any kind of defense against it, and ship protection, and really horrible strategies, is because um, uh, the British were saying, look, we've done anti-submarine warfare for years. We need to send some experts over there and tell you how to do it. And we had a guy named Ernest King who was in charge of the Navy. And Ernest King hated limeys. He hated the English. So he basically told them to go screw themselves. And the English were mystified. They're like, what are you doing? Your ships are sinking. And this went on for months and months and months and months and months. And we literally had hundreds and hundreds of Americans dying and losing just so many ships, okay? So loose lips did not sink those ships. That was incompetence. There's not everybody in government is incompetent, or is incompetent, is competent and honest. There are incompetent people, there are dishonest people. If you look at everybody, there, there's two sides to the story of this whole WikiLeaks thing, okay? But there's a real simple analogy, the Pentagon Papers, okay? When the Pentagon Papers yeah. were released... It had no relevance to this case. Oh, when, when the Pentagon will not... I would, I would argue that journalists would disagree with you, and I've seen articles written by journalists that disagree yeah, with that relevant. point of view. So my point is, is that the Pentagon Papers were released, and the government made a very, very strong argument that it was basically traitors. Invalid. Traitors. And so... Um, what they call them. And what happened later? It dis they discovered, wow, the government is running a war and they're not only incompetent, but they know they're losing and they're not telling anybody. And so there, there's not, it's not a direct analogy, but there are certainly arguments that, uh, that a, a free and independent press is imperative and sometimes the government just screws up or is dishonest. And so uh, um, I, I strongly support a open trial for this guy. I imagine he's going to be brought back to the U.S., but I'm opposed to any secret trials. So, my two cents. All right. Thank you again for the presentation. Uh, 
it wasn't so much about science in the way that I might have been expecting from the description, but I had seen some of your previous talks, so I wasn't disappointed that it went off into conspiracy country. There's a man named Eric Kaufman, who's a political scientist and demographer, who's talked about the growth of uh, strict religious denominations because of their superior birth rates. Uh, you know, sometimes having three, four, six, seven kids, whatever, so that. For example, the American evangelical community has grown more through superior birth rates than they have through conversions. Uh, and that could explain something for like the growth of the belief in creationism. But that's not what we're really talking about tonight. So uh, before he died, Carl Sagan's final book was called The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark, I believe was the subtitle. And it was about uh, already 20 years ago or more, because he died in the 90s, anti-scientific beliefs uh, and anti-rational beliefs in general uh, and he tied that to conspiracy theories as well, theories about UFOs, theories of uh, beliefs about demonic possession, beliefs about satanic cults uh, abducting people because a lot of the stories resembled each other and they followed the same kind of paranoid style and that may speak more to the motivations of wanting to have these paranoid beliefs that allow you to feel control over a world that is, no, none of us can really control a world full of billions of people by ourselves. Uh, it just cannot be done. And that belief will not save you. Um, but it can be a comforting illusion uh, to miseducate yourself with. Uh, running down the random list of stuff, uh, there's too much to really tackle, but Everything from, part of the reason the word socialism has been conflated for years isn't just by conservatives, a lot of left-wingers conflated the socialism of Western Europe and the socialism of the Khmer Rouge or the Soviet Union or Cuba. They also polluted that vocabulary by using it too much to apply to both uh, variations, the democratic kind of socialism and the not so democratic kind of socialism. Uh, when it comes to the anti-Semitic calumnies, um, Israel as Satan, Mossad being created by Hitler, Jews sending other Jews to Auschwitz, uh, some of these barely warrant a response. I can't believe I have to say this stuff out loud. Uh, Leo Strauss uh, is a refugee who is a German Jew who fled in 1937 to the United States. Uh, he is associated with a lot of the intellectuals who later went on to lead the neoconservative movement. But he was not working for Hitler when he had to run his ass across the Atlantic uh, to get over here, away from the Third Reich. Um, the Rothschild Bank in Austria lost their holdings and their assets to the Third Reich, and their bank was only founded in the 1760s. Anyway, got to go. Which bank was that? The Rothschilds. All right, I'll go right All right. Charlie's got to go yet still, too, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he Charlie, how does he get two rebuttals? He oh, gave rebuttal already. Yeah. We called you up to give you a rebuttal, remember? Well, what's this? Just say argue with him. <laughs> that was a rebuttal, Charlie. No, it wasn't. Rebuttal. Yes, it was. <laughs> you take a vote. Rebuttal, Who think Charlie, Charlie gave his rebuttal? Now show your hands. <laughs> All right. Thank All right, you. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm out of here. He should be a lot of second rate bottle ink. It's an elder statesman. Right, well, we're running out of time. Ah, oh, fuck you. <laughs> if, if, if. I'll take only two minutes. Take your fucking vote. Shut <laughs> up your ass. Oh, Charlie's Raven. There's another night with we passed, we did follow the two rules of the college one full of time and no personal attacks or no heckling. Let's see if we can get through one night sometime without heckling. It'd be nice. Well, I got a minute and 40 seconds left. Because we got to get out of here by quarter to nine. What time is it now? 8.30. It's about 8, 8.31, 8.32. So Ellen will get five, six minutes, and we'll move out, and we'll be out of here by quarter to nine. All right. I'm so nervous. Let's go. You want it on? The movie A Man yeah. for All Seasons talked about a concept, the old right, English law. The Silence down. means consent. It means if you remain silent when you're looking at some kind of crime, it means you consent to it, not that you object to it. It's our duty to speak up as, as we see crimes, multiple crimes emanating from the swamp that we call the White House every day. 
Captain Kirk said it best, our five-year mission is Come to go on. where no man has gone before, and that's where we are. Nobody alive today has ever seen a swamp like what Trump is running out of the White House. It's unique. And uh, you, have to, you have to be a certified swamp thing with criminal tendencies to become, uh, get a job at the White House to run one of our agencies. Every one of them is run by a corporate criminal now. I would say just do a study, look, look at some of the articles, what, what the scientists are saying all over the world. There's a scientific consensus of national academies of science basically in every country that the number one threat to global humanity now is global warming and climate change. And uh, the gentleman left that gave the false piece of information about uh, what Ellen said about the woman named AOC. She is not saying that the world is going to end by the year to, uh, 2030. She's, re she's reporting what hundreds of scientists are saying all over the world. 2.30 is 11 years from now, the window of opportunity to do something to stop the worst of climate change, that window closes, and we won't be able to do much after that if we don't get off fossil fuel, mostly in the next five to six years. So going all electric, solar, solar is cheap, wind is cheap, electric cars are getting cheaper and affordable. It's all happening if we support it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, our, our speaker, Helen Corley, will get the last word. Last word. Come last on, you got the last we'll word. Five yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got the last word. And we will give you a heads up because we, we let, they want us to clean this room out by four to nine, not two minutes to nine like we've been doing in the past. Okay? If everybody would uh, start picking up as soon as Helen gets through we'll talking, we'll, we'll get more. Thank you. The reason, the reason. Right, it's it's my, nice. uh, it's more murder. Um, just just to to the CC. This was the... Alan, get up in front of the microphone. Just do it, just bring it if you have to. Yeah. Yeah, I have to Yeah, I guess the comments, thank you for your good feedback. This is uh, the, you know, showing the collateral, the WikiLeaks. I think that was a great point why they're really opposing Julian Assange's real crime was, this is what he leaked, evidence of these guys, and we could play it, you know, playing shooting photographers, innocent photographers. Uh, this, this is what Chelsea Manning leaked to mm -hmm. Julian Assange. And the world would not have seen this if not. I don't know if you've seen um, Edward Snowden's uh, movie that Oliver Stone made on that. Uh, you know, we're, the truth is our video cameras do look at us, you know, and that's not paranoia. That's real. The telephones are, are really collecting information all the time. That's what William Benny, why he's able to write and speak He's, you know, was the head of NSA that designed the software that, you know, that gave the NSA this total surveillance ability to uh, look at us all the time, but yet it's the way it's not really used because they're still denied that they're doing it. So, like in court, you know, um, they they have to dance around the fact that they, if you see a minority report, they, they know who's going to commit the crime before they do it. It's like a thought crime, you know. Um, that was a minority report. But the truth is, I read that Giuliani um, and Chertoff, uh, both, you know, in New York as district attorneys, decided this creative new way of, uh, to do predictive um, database, you know, building. So in Chicago now we have a 375,000 gang member database that we are trying to get them to stop using, you know, but it is, it's just, a, you know, invitation to, and I'm, if you've looked at these movies about COINTELPRO, the way J. Edgar Hoover, you know, put a person in with Mark, or with Fred Chapman, and then, you know, police come in and just shoot them up and, you know, they defend their right to do it. It was a, it was a targeted attack. This is military policing. 
This is what's taught by the Israel Defense Force to the, our Chicago police. And if you've ever looked at these prosecutors in trial, these guys are smug and they are suppressing the same guys that did John Burge. We're trying to get them out of prison. And yet the same prosecutor who worked with Mayor Richard Daly as the assistant state's attorney is there every day overseeing the special prosecution to, you know, and the, there's one good judge, Hoodie's going, what, you're not allowed to be here. You're the bad, dirty prosecutor that worked with Daly to put these, torture these guys and put them in prison for something they didn't do. And now you're keeping them in there? You're, you've overseen the entire investigation, whether they, their torture should have, was coerced and they were innocent and they should be let out. And he's, yep, dirty politics all the way, it goes all the way up. That's why you only saw certain people running for office. And I had gone up in front of Lori Lightfoot and watched her at the police board and it was talking to the hand, you know. I'm like, do you realize what you're doing? And she was just, didn't care. You know, um, and so now I'm not surprised when this 25, this 1.6 billion dollar tip money going as a kickback to Rahm Emanuel and Lori Lightfoot and all the dirty politicians that are pushing this thing through. Um, you know, that money was supposed to go for schools and for mental health facilities, but they didn't. I, I was trying to get a job as a mental health coordinator, a social worker, a CADC. I couldn't get it because Geo Group bought up all the um, all the mental health facilities. So we basically turned our health care into a prison. We've got forever prisons. And this is not just a conspiracy theory, though it does. If it's a conspiracy theory, I challenge you to test this theory because theories are what we use when a lot of facts all add up and you connect the dots. And that's what Darwin's theory is. And nobody's, you know, you can prove it. It's a scientific way of you test these hypotheses, but disprove it. Find one evidence that there wasn't some really, I mean, you look at the top of Israel and it's got a, you know, this a Rothschild stuff all over it. And believe me, Peter Dale Scott said, don't say Rothschild. I, I wince when I say it. I go, okay, well, don't cut me off just because I said it. But if it happens to be true, somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to speak up, right? And so, I mean, don't intimidate people and implicate them as being anti-Semitic, which is exactly what they did to this hell, hell, you know, this poor Muslim girl. And thank God she's got the strength not to fold because it's, it's really a Thoreau age of the majority of one. As Thoreau said, tell the truth and all the corrupt ones need to fall by the wayside or else we might, we do have to get a, a talk on climate change. I'm sorry I didn't do no, more research right. on that. Next time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming all and uh, we will see you next week. We're out.